Legends, I hope you're all fantastic. Now, I love clickbait as much as the next person, but the Digitech Timebender probably is the best delay pedal you've never heard of. I wrote this off as a Boss DD20 clone because it kind of is just like a weird uncanny valley version of the DD20, you know, twin pedal, multiple modes, there's a looper in there, there's a tone control, you can control modulation on here, and a bunch of other things, stereo in and out, expression pedal connection, you get the picture by now, but this probably has more in common with something like an even tied pitch factor because there is this voicing control on here, which lets you pitch shift your delays diatonically at different intervals, which we will get into. And this is gonna be a longer video because I wanna go through all the different functions on this pedal, except the looper. You'll know what loopers do in delay pedals by now, but we'll kind of go through the different voicings on there and the different delay modes. We'll look at the pattern control, which is massively powerful, and then we'll dive into the pitch shifting functions on there. But this thing, I'll say straight up, has kind of blown my mind. I didn't expect it to be this good. So let's just get straight into it. Okay, let's just get started by exploring the basic controls. I'm gonna to stick to a single delay mode here. You can see I've got it set on the digital mode. We've got controls for the tone of the delay, the number of repeats, there is a tap tempo multiplier, so you can select different subdivisions. There's a modulation control, which lets you select between three different modulation rates. And there is a pattern control. I'm gonna start on pattern number one, which is basically just gonna give us a simple mono delay, repeats at minimum, tone in the middle on the digital mode, just basically gives you whatever you put into it. <laughs> Now, I would immediately start by adding some repeats and experimenting with the tone control. Let's turn the tone control up to around three o'clock. This is gonna take out a lot of low end from the delay. <laughs> That starts to kind of sound like a bit of a vintage uh, old DDL style delay. And if I turn it down, it's gonna get really dark really quickly. And that's almost like too bright and too dark at those extremes there. So I might just bring the tone control up to around there. What is that around 10, 11 o'clock? That's got quite a nice decay to it. The next thing I would do to sweeten this up is to add some modulation. Like I said, three different modulation rates and with this particular pattern, now you're gonna to start to hear that kind of stereo spread. <laughs> And the fast mode in there is kind of interesting. We'll revisit that to kind of make a faux Leslie sound, but this just kind of medium modulation, basically with the mod knob stuck right in the middle there, this sweetens it up so nicely. I love the way this is sounding so far. <laughs> So you can see it's pretty easy to just take a straight up mode on here and sweeten it and dial it in to your taste using these controls. Now, one of the many interesting controls on here is this pattern control. So at the moment, we essentially have this uh, kind of straight down the guts delay. We can offset these to create dual delays by playing around with the different patterns. I say dual delays, I should actually say multi-tap delays. The first couple are dual delays. This is what pattern two gives us. <laughs> So 
So that's pretty cool. My favorite is definitely pattern three on here. This gives you the classic quarter note dotted eighth note subdivision. So if I tap in the tempo here, I've got the multiplier set to be a quarter note. We get this. <laughs> There's a bunch of other awesome multi-tap patterns in here. I really like pattern number, where is it, number 10? I think this kind of sounds like a multi-head echo. <laughs> And then we'll hear good old pattern number three with distortion as well. <laughs> That's basically my ideal dual delay right there. And that's something that you can't do on the DD20. The DD20 does have a dual delay mode, but it can only give you like a standard delay plus up to 100 milliseconds, which I always found kind of strange. The Boss DD200 does have a dual delay mode, but that that's where I live, that particular type of delay. We will get on to this kind of magic pitch shifting setting in a second, but first let's just kind of stay here. I might go back to a clean sound and then we'll just go through the different delay modes so you can hear the difference in tonality there. Okay, back to a clean tone. I've reset the tone control to the middle, brought the repeats down a little bit, and I'm just gonna set that modulation in the middle right there. We'll stay on pattern three, just a refresher. This is what the digital mode sounds like with a clean sound. <laughs> Let's try the analog mode and just hear the basic tonality that's in there. <laughs> That's nice. That is really, really well voiced. Let's try it with a lot of repeats and see if we can kind of get it to self oscillate and play around with the time control. So repeats at maximum and uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> So it will do those dirty analog style self oscillation effects when you play around with the repeats and the time knob. There's two different tape modes in here, one called moving head and one called variable speed. This is moving head, then we'll hear variable speed. <laughs> So 
So you can hear the variable speed delay there. Basically, it's a little bit brighter sounding, but it's kind of got a different modulation character going on there. There's two dynamic modes. There's a dynamic digital and there's a dynamic analog. I'm just going to start with dynamic analog. They both basically do the same thing. They just have a slightly different character about the repeats. And I like the analog mode more on the standard mode. So let's start there with the dynamic mode. It's going to give you a duct delay. <laughs> So dynamic analog with distortion might be my favorite mode so far. There's another mode called dynamic repeats, which when you're playing, it is going to lower the number of repeats. And when you stop, it's going to stretch out how long the decay is, which is kind of interesting. So check this out with no repeats. All righty, still got that dynamic delay thing in there as well. The ducker, let's bring the repeats up. That's a really interesting take on a dynamic delay where it's not just ducking the level, it's also increasing the number of repeats. I like that. There's this time warp delay, which kind of starts to get pretty wild. <laughs> Of course, have reverse delay on here. So the reverse sounds like a reverse delay. Then there's this envelope delay, which kind of interesting. It's while you're playing, you kind of have this onset glitch style effect with the delay. You just kind of have to hear it to believe it. The edge that it has over something like the DD20 is definitely the pattern control in there because you can get a true kind of dual delay and many other styles of delay in there. It doesn't have something like twist or warp. I think the analog mode sounds really good. The tape mode sound really good as well. And I love the modulation on this and the fact that there is a dedicated modulation knob, unlike the DD20 where you got to kind of go menu diving, is a massive plus. But the thing that makes this a totally different beast is the voicing control. And this lets you access pitch shifting on your delays. 
Let's try something. For example, the way I've got this dual delay set up, you can see it says U and U, so they're set at unison. Let's do this. This will give me a unison delay on one delay tap, and it will give me a low octave on another. If I press and hold this, it will tell me the key that I'm playing in, so this will all be diatonic when we look at different intervals, but we can start to have some real fun with this now. It's a little bit artifacty there. I don't mind that though. Let's just try out some different modes. This will give us unison and then two different low octaves. That's super fun. If we play around with different patterns as well, which we'll see in a second, you're also going to get different options for the pitch shifted repeats. Let's try something that is not an octave. So this is unison, a fifth and a low octave in there. Again, I'm just sticking to A major because that's where I've got the pedal set. Let's try a different pattern for that one, say like pattern 10. This starts to sound really interesting. Let's just keep going with this. I'll try some different patterns and some different intervals. Let's try this unison six and fourth. I've got quite a bit of modulation and some repeats happening now.
beautiful. There's so much inspiration in here. Like I said, you can just use it as a standard delay or you can get into it for these modes. And this is so overlooked. What an overlooked pedal. This does some amazing stuff. You can, of course, do kind of traditional delay tricks. Like if I go back to just this pattern number one, I'll stay on the analog mode. I will set the voicing at unison. I'm going to turn the time right down to 10 milliseconds. And I like the way this modulation sounds so much that I'll just use this to create a lovely clean chorus. <laughs> Adding some repeats in there turns it into a flanger. Now I could play around with this pattern control and kind of get like a dual mode flanger or something like that, which I think is really cool. Sounds great, but what we can do then is we could add in some intervals on there. So we could have like a pitch shifted chorus. Let's use just a high octave on there. This is really, really cool. There's a lot of potential for new sounds there, and you can also use this, like I said, as a chorus, a flanger, a pitch shifter, a harmonizer. A lot of value for a supposed delay pedal. Alrighty, there's a strum mode on here as well, so if I basically hold this down and then just strum a pattern, I've got a rhythm tap delay in here. Let's do that. <laughs> Very much skimmed over the strum pattern in there and we didn't even look at the looper, but yeah, this has impressed me so much. I was expecting just a kind of Boss DD20 clone and what you actually get is like an entire kind of rack pitch shifted delay in a compact pedal. It is a really heavy pedal. The big downside is that you need an AC power supply for it. So I'm guessing you can't just kind of drop this onto your standard pedal board and it's that, and I'm guessing it's the way this pedal was marketed and the time that it came out that are probably the reasons why it's not considered a classic, because it is a massively functional delay and pitch shifter. There's so much going on in here. It's very much a kind of hidden secret at the moment. It has kind of blown my mind, and I wouldn't compare it to the DD20. The DD20 does some really good boss delays. It does all the vanilla stuff you would ever need, plus some really cool sound on sound modes. This is a different animal. If you like kind of glitchy warped delays and you love playing around with pitch shifters, 
you gotta try this out. If you just want some really nice kind of studio style delays on your pedal board, I would recommend it for that as well. I just love that pattern number three with the analog either duct or non-duct mode, a little bit of modulation. I think the modulation is voiced really, really well on this particular pedal and uh, stereo in and out, you can connect an expression pedal to it. You can connect an external foot switch to access extra modes on there. There's a looper, there's that strum mode, there's all the multi-head echoes, uh, all the controls you need to kind of sweeten your delay sound are there on the front panel. It is such a winner. I really, really struggle to find anything bad to say about this particular pedal other than the power supply. If you've watched the whole video, I would say thank you so much for putting up with me throughout this entire thing. If you want to support the channel, there are links in the video description. And yeah, get in while you can with the Digitech Timebender. I think it is a massively overlooked, awesome delay pedal. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe. Be good to one another. I'll see you next time.